we are with the second part of chapter 17 at the clinic. We left Bat at the clinic and him and Lawrence were having a little conversation about the skunk kit and Lawrence was showing him the little sling that he made so that the kit would be able to be comfortable and be with him and he wouldn't be lonely. So let's pick up where we left off. Here we go. Can I wear him? Bat asked. Of course. We don't want him to get wet when I'm splashing, when I'm washing the dogs. Here. Very carefully, Lawrence pulled the sling up over his head and then lowered it over Bat's. But the sling, which had barely reached Lawrence's chest, sank all the way to Bat's belly button. We can fix that, said Lawrence, and he looped the fabric into a knot behind Bat's neck to shorten the sling. There, he said, now you're a marsupial bat. There are no marsupial bats, Bat said. Marsupial infants need to have strong arms and claws to climb into their mother's pouch. Bats have wings. Bat peered into the pouch to see if Thor had been disturbed by the movement. But the kid was still fast asleep. He's got more fur than he had this morning, Bat said. I can see the black and white growing in. They grow up so fast, Lauren said. You seem bigger than the last time I saw you, too. Not you, said Bat, closing up the pouch and tucking it into his shirt. You're already all the way big. Lawrence grinned. If I get any bigger, I'll have to buy a special order shoes. I already wear the biggest size the shoe store sells. Good thing you're too old to grow, Bat said. Good thing indeed, said Lawrence. Then he said, Thor is a great name, Bat. Did you come up with it? No, said Bat. Janie did. You're a lucky kid to have such a creative sister, Lawrence said. Did you thank her? No, said Bat. Not yet. Well, there will be time for that later, Lawrence said. How about assisting me with some baths? Usually, Bat would do just about anything to help Lawrence with baths. But now, with Thor in the sling, curled up in a sleep, I don't know, Bat said. Don't worry about the kit, Lawrence said. You can wear an apron, and I'll do all the soapy stuff. Lawrence draped a green apron around Bat's neck. Bat tried to make sure it wasn't pressing too tight against the sling as Lawrence tied the waist strap. All good? Lawrence asked. I can't tell if Thor is still breathing, Bat said. Maybe it's too tight. Lawrence untied the strap and Bat took off the apron. He pulled open the sling and peered inside. There was Thor, still tightly curled into a little ball, still fast asleep. He's okay, sighed Bat. Lawrence patted Bat's shoulder. Maybe you can just keep me company today. How does that sound, Bat boy? Better, said Bat. I can supervise. Good idea, Lawrence said. You can tell me when I use too much soap. That's easy, said Bat, following Lawrence into the holding room, where dogs waited in separate kennels for their bath. You always use too much soap. Bat climbed up on the counter across from the big silver wash basin and watched as Lawrence bent down to open the far kennel. He scooped up a shaggy white poodle who didn't look very happy about what was about to happen. You're okay, Jeff, Lawrence said. He was using his soothing voice, calm and deep. Jeff is a funny name for a poodle, Bat said. Well, that's a funny name for a kid, Lawrence answered, setting Jeff into the wash basin before smiling at Bat. Bat smiled back. Then Lawrence got to work, slipping Jeff's head into a restraint so he couldn't jump out of the tub, then turning on the faucet and running his hands under the water to check its temperature before he started spraying down the dog. That's a new restraint, isn't it? Bat asked. Good eye, said Lawrence. He shut off the water and began massaging shampoo into Jeff's curly pelt. The other one was getting rusty, so I ordered this new model. Is that a suction cup connect, connecting it to the wall? It sure is, said Lawrence, and a strong one, too. He grabbed a hold of the rope and tugged on it to show Bat how well it was connected to the wall. But with a loud pop, the suction cup came free. Jeff didn't waste any time. With an excited yip, he scrambled over the lip of the wash basin and leaped to the ground, bubbles everywhere. He slipped and slid when he landed, his nails scraping across the linoleum floor. Lawrence reached to grab him, but Jeff was too fast. He scrambled toward the door. Bat pulled his legs up, to, up onto the counter and crossed them, one arm wrapping protectively around Thor in his sling. The air smelled like warm, wet dog and strawberry shampoo. Lawrence's fingers were inches away from Jeff when he, his heel found a puddle of soapy water. One moment he was standing, and the next moment he was flat on his back. Are you okay? Bat asked. 
but he didn't climb down from his perch. His first priority was keeping the kit safe and dry. I've been better, Lawrence groaned. Jeff, who had discovered that the door was closed tight, returned to peer down at Lawrence. He lowered his head and lovingly licked Lawrence's cheek with his long pink tongue. Well, that sounds like quite an adventure, doesn't it? Sounds like fun, but I don't know if I'd want to be Lawrence and laid up on my back. But then you have to laugh because the dog, Jeff, came over and just started licking his face like, I'm sorry. So, sounds like a fun chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned tomorrow for Chapter 18.